This is the story of a forest whose only frontiers once seemed to be the sky and sea. Each of its trees and streams was a haven of life. In 1832, a naturalist beginning a round-the-world voyage in Brazil was amazed to find the richest biodiversity he'd ever seen. 20,000 plant species, more than 250 different mammals, 340 amphibians, and 350 types of fish. The enthralled traveler's name was Charles Darwin. Back then, the Atlantic forest, which the Portuguese called Mata Atlantica, covered an area equivalent to France, Germany, and Spain combined. Its green sea ran all the way down the ocean coast from the north of Brazil to Argentina. From west to east, it offered a variety of ecosystems ranging from mangrove swamps to vast stretches of pines and broad-leaved trees. The forest seemed eternal. But in time, this is what happened. Stone, concrete, steel, and plastic. Devastation heaped on ruin. First, the forest was cut down for its wood, especially from a tree red as the embers in a brazier, the Brazil, which gave the country its name. Then land was cleared to create coffee plantations. Later, the Industrial Revolution raised what remained of the original forest. Finally, the city of Rio de Janeiro, Brazil's capital until 1960, stretched to the horizon like the country's industrial capital, São Paulo. The people who lived in these megalopolises cleared still more land to farm the earth and grow pasture for their herds. They planted sugarcane and ripped open the ground to dig mines. 93% of the forest was lost. The great stream of vegetation that had once run unbroken for 3,000 kilometers from north to south was reduced to mere scraps of jungle like confetti on a concrete slab. Then came a miracle. In some of these islands of nature, a few golden lion tamarins survived, members of the Mata Atlantica's characteristic species. There weren't enough to keep the species viable, but when individuals were brought from zoos and reserves all over the world and reintroduced, the tamarind population grew from 200 in 1970 